Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on a short but sweet review of Expedition to Earth by Arthur C. Clarke. This is a short story collection by one of the masters of science fiction. What I'm going to do, I'll read you the blurb, I'm going to go through and share uh, the titles of the stories. I actually think it's very cool. Uh, somebody's handwritten a table of contents here. Uh, then I'll uh, check out my tabs and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads Earth civilization was long dead, but dying, a message to the future had been left. A time capsule on the summit of the highest peak in the only mountain range to stand clear of the returned glaciers of the last ice age. The accumulated experience of those who had called themselves mankind had been reduced to a few fragments, clues to how it had been. And now, millennia later, the expedition to Earth had come flaming down from deep space to lock onto the faintest of transmissions as a fast-fading beacon whispered to them that here there had once been intelligent life. Expedition to Earth, the title story, one out of 11 superb science fiction stories by Arthur C. Clarke. So, we have Second Dawn, If I Forget the O-Earth, Expedition to Earth, Superiority, Nemesis, Hide and Seek, Encounter in the Dawn, Loophole, Inheritance, and The Sentinel. And I actually, um, read a, a couple of these that um, in the Sentinel. Anyway, so I'm gonna go through and check out some of my tabs. To be honest, because Cl Clark is mostly an ideas man, I don't think it really matters what stories these are in. I'm not gonna talk a huge amount about the plots or anything. So I thought this was cool because it talks about how uh, the food supply is fixed and populations aren't, which is one of the problems we're experiencing now with overpopulation on the globe. The mind is a wonderful thing, Eris, but by itself it is helpless in the universe of matter. We know now how to multiply the power of our brains by an enormous factor. We can solve, perhaps, the great problems of mathematics that have baffled us for ages. But neither our unaided minds, nor the Greek mind we've now created, can alter in the slightest the one fact that, that all through history has brought us and the Mithranians into conflict. The fact that the food supply is fixed and our populations are not. Alright, so then we have Breaking Strain. Um, and this is the one that I'd read elsewhere. The guy's smoking a cigarette in space, which seems very unlikely. But I did like this line, news that is sufficiently bad news somehow carries its own guarantee of truth. Only good reports need confirmation. And that's when I stopped reading this one because I realized that I had read this one before. It's basically a story about this ship is trying to return to Earth from space, but they don't have enough oxygen. So they're trying to jettison all of the cargo and stuff to try and preserve as much oxygen as, as well, to keep their speed up. And then they start jettisoning people, basically. <laughs> This line I quite liked. You have slept infinitely longer than a hundred years. The world you knew has ceased to be for longer than you can imagine. Um, and that's how I feel sometimes when I wake up. So here we have a tab from Hide and Seek. So they're called Squirrels Tree Rats on the grounds that people are too sentimental to shoot squirrels. And they need to get rid of them because they're considered pet. I quite like the phrase lumps of cosmic slag as well. I thought that was good. I like this little sentence here. Uh, there were times now when he almost wished he were a robot himself, devoid of feelings or emotions, able to watch the fall of a leaf or the death agonies of a world with equal detachment. And that is all I tabbed out of this book. So as you can tell, I didn't have a huge amount to say about it. It didn't help that two of the stories I'd already read, and uh, the one that the first one that I mentioned is probably my favourite Arthur C. Clarke story. is very well done. Um, but without those, the remaining stories are just air. I gave this like a middle of the road 3 out of 5. I don't think it's uh, Arthur C. Clarke's best. I've only read like a handful, maybe a half dozen of his books so far, and even those are enough for me to know that you can do a lot better than this. So I wouldn't recommend this one unless you're a big Arthur C. Clarke fan. Um, if, you, if you're new to his work, try one of his more popular books first before you get to this. So we have it, that's my short and sweet review of Expedition to Earth by Arthur C. Clarke. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.